The Hard Truth with Akosia Konedu. Only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Echo Bank. Fellow Ghanaians, as 7 December approaches, we must continue to remind ourselves that we only have one Ghana and that we must strive to maintain the peace and tranquility that we enjoy as a people. Though we may have different views and support different political parties, our hope is to see a prosperous and united nation where we can enjoy the fruit of development as a people together. Let us stand for peace before, during, and after the elections. My name is Nana Akwesi Aknidu Asante Samuels and I stand for peace. You are watching The Hard Truth and uh, well, proudly brought to you by Octoglo Ghana Limited and supported by Ecobank, the Pan African Bank. Richard Frimpon upon an associate professor at the Faculty of Law, Thompson River University uh, in Canada. So, you know, again, there's been some reports that um, the prosecutor's office of the ICC is ready to initiate a full investigation on a range of, you know, possible war crimes and war against humanity in Afghanistan, including some you know, U.S. Uh, personnel. Again, do you think that this is really possible and are we likely to see the ICC and the U.S. in a possible collision course? Yeah, I think it's long overdue. I think we are all aware of the situation in Afghanistan, <sighs> which is terrible. Um, we are all aware of the situation in Syria, which is more terrible than um, the situation in many African countries. So there's certainly a case to be, to be made for that. Um, there will certainly be some issues because the United States will be somehow involved. But I think the International Criminal Court has the ability to prosecute and I think it will do a good job if it decides to take it on. And I think it's also important that the court is turning its attention away from Africa and looking at other countries where some of um, these injustices are being perpetuated. So I think it's an appropriate thing to do. Richard, position in the United States concerning uh, the ICC very widely and the Clinton administration, you know, signed the Rome Statutes in 2000 but did not really submit uh, it for uh, Senate ratification. The Bush administration, however, at the time of the ICC funding stated that it would not join the ICC. Now Obama came in and has subsequently re-established a working relationship uh, with the court. Let me ask what you foresee Donald Trump uh, are doing with uh, in regards to the ICC. Yeah, personally I don't um, foresee the United States signing up to the room um, statute anytime soon. I think um, definitely Obama was an internationalist and what would have expected um, that he would have done a little more in terms of getting the, the United States onto um, as a member of the organization. Um, but certainly there's no support mm. for the organization in Congress and Congress is the one which um, has to ratify this treaty um, before they, it, it can become, uh, can enter into force in the United States. So I don't see Trump who, is, who doesn't look like an internationalist signing up onto this treaty. I don't think it will happen. Richard, before the uh, United States election, most polls in the U.S. and many more across the world, you know, tipped Hillary Clinton to win the presidential, you know, elections. Mm -hmm. Now, the world, you know, shocked or there was some shaking mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, Trump against all odds merged mm -hmm. uh, uh, victorious on the D-Day. Yeah. Were you surprised, let me ask, ask, by the outcome of the U.S. election? 
I was very surprised. I, I never expected, I think I told my class a million times that it will not happen. And I was very surprised that it happened. But I think we all have to appreciate that the United States is a very different country. Mm. And it tends to be very unpredictable. And this is a classic example where you cannot easily extend or you, you cannot easily understand what is going on in the country. Because in no other part of the world will you have such a guy as the president of the country. Somebody <laughs> who is insulting women, who is insulting immigrants with a businessman and you don't know any of his connections, business dealings with that. We don't know a lot about this um, mm. um, this guy, but I think that is what the people elected. Yes, but, but what, what do you really it. make of, of uh, his stance and uh, proposed action regarding uh, immigrants, especially African immigrants in the U.S.? I think so far his immigration talk has been directed more against uh, Medi Mexicans. Mexican, um, yeah. Africa did not feature a lot in the elections, in the debates, and also in the various statements uh, made by the candidates. So we don't really know whether um, Africans will be targeted. And um, I don't believe that there are many illegal um, African migrants in the United States compared to um, people coming from Mexico. And it, it takes a lot to get to the United States. You know, States after the election, here. most people said, yeah, it would be difficult now securing visas uh, to yeah. the US. Did you foresee that happening in any parts of the African countries? It, it, it all depends on whether or not he's prepared to implement some of the statements which he made in the course of um, the campaigning. So in the course of the campaigning, he talked about extreme vetting, mm, for example. Mm. So if that is going to happen, mm. then definitely it will disadvantage um, uh, some of our colleagues and, um, um, and brothers and sisters coming from Africa um, to visit the United <laughs> States, for example. So if, it, it's all a question of whether or not he will implement. And after the election, some of the statements he's made, I think, you get a sense that he's walking back a yeah, little. Yeah, he's crawling some. back, yeah. So we, 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 we all have to pay attention. But, but Richard, even if, you know, he doesn't actually deport illegal <coughs> uh, 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 immigrants, do mm -hmm. you also think that his posture and, and comments will really foment the uh, divisive uh, politics of race? Oh, absolutely. I think the United States has, has always been a divided country. I think it's an illusion to believe that mm -hmm. the United mm -hmm. States is not. And what happened during the elections, I think, has worsened the situation. So now there's a lot of news online, even on the BBC, CNN, about churches being labeled with graffiti yeah, yeah. and and on and all yeah. that so a lot of horrible things are going on and have been reported and i think his campaigning and some of the statements that he made in the course of um the campaigning has made the situation worse it has emboldened some people um and again we just have to wait and see when he comes into office because you can <laughs> argue that sometimes just entering into office it it's, it's so best people and it, it will calm him down, it's possible, uh, once he confronts reality that is not like um, a TV show or something like right. that. It's, it's more complicated being a president. Maybe he will change, but if he doesn't change, then I think the world is in, in for a big trouble. Richard, the, the narrative, uh, again, is gradually widening uh, to include how long uh, Donald Trump will actually stay as president. Conversations are shifted from him going for, say, one term to him falling victim to impeachment you know, proceedings. Alan Lichman, uh, I think a history professor who has predicted nine uh, conservative uh, 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 presidential elections is all based on a uh, model he created, you know, predicted Trump would win. Mm -hmm. Now this professor also said, also predicted that Trump will eventually be impeached by the Republican Congress that will prefer, you know, Mike, President Mike uh, Pence. Mm -hmm. Again, in your opinion, do you think that Mr. Trump will, you know, survive the first time in office? I don't see why he won, but he, he looks like somebody you cannot predict, so you don't really know what he will do on a day-to-day mm -hmm. basis. So. Again, we just have to wait and see. Of course, he's not being erratic in his business dealings. I think 
if he was that type, he wouldn't have Do we, do we run a presidency or do we run a country, you know, with a business model? I mean, I'm a, I'm a good businesswoman, a good businessman. So equally, I'm going to be a, a good president. Does it work that way? I, I don't think it easily translates, but mm. I, I think it will be beneficial because the hope, the hope, in the United States is that because he's a businessman he will be able to improve the economy I think that that was a major part of his campaigning so again we have to wait and see but you cannot certainly run a state like you are running a business the the state does not exist to make profit for example so you cannot treat human beings in a state as you treat employees or customers um, in a business but again we have to wait and see but, but mm -hmm. let's go back a little bit. Do, do you think that uh, Sanders was a better choice uh, than uh, Hillary? People are saying if, if Sanders was, was to be in the forefront, the story would have been different. What, what, do you, what would you say to that? I think it's always difficult to prove a negative. I suspect the country was just not ready to elect a Democrat. It looks like even a frog stood for the <laughs> Republicans they would have voted for him. So <laughs> I don't really think it's a problem with Hillary. Yeah, she certainly had some issues with um, these emails and things like that. But personally, I won't put it on the same level as insulting women, insulting migrants. Of course, we all have problems with emails. It's a mm. mature woman. She doesn't know a lot about mm. technology. So you can't expect him her to be dealing with technology in the same way as a 15 year old will be doing but that, that, that's another so i don't think it's her fault so stay on we'll be right back the hard truth with akosia konedu only on vice at one brought to you by echo bank Ecobank, we see a great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries, it's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. Dr. Richard uh, Frimponopon, I don't know how to call you, whether to call you a doctor or a lawyer. How should I address Richard you? Richard is enough. Well, he's being modest. <laughs> so Richard Frimponopon is an associate <coughs> professor at the Faculty of Law, uh, Thompson Rivers University in Canada. Richard, the uh, chief observer of um, the European Union election observation mission in Ghana 2016, Mr. Uh, Thames uh, Mesrit, has said it's very important that Ghana protect its democracy and build on it you know, in the upcoming election. In its broad sense, can we call Ghana, um, let's say, a mature democratic uh, 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 state, uh, state, and how can we build on uh, you know, the election just a few weeks away? Weeks away? I think uh, I would say we are still experimenting with democracy. It takes time. Um, um, for experimenting dem for democracy to develop i think in but that we say that ghana is a conk 100 percent democratic state we say with so much passion so if experimenting it's like we are not sure what we're doing i no i i think that that's not what it means it means that we're still working on it and we've been working on it since 1992 and i think so far we've done very well um, with that experiment compared to um, the situation in other African states said that we are now seen even as a star um, um, on the continent. So that is very important. But I think we have to appreciate that we are still developing our democracy and we, we, we shouldn't be complacent about what we have because it's very fragile. That's why I call it an experiment. And it, it can easily fall apart if we do not work towards or stay in it. And 
I think one of the things which we really have to do is to make sure that our institutions work. It's, it's very important that we respect our institutions, the institution of the Electoral mm -hmm. Commission, the institution of the Judiciary, the Executive Parliament and things like that. We, we have to have confidence in our institutions and we, we don't have to disrespect those institutions or act towards them in a manner which will undermine them. Is, is very important. Richard, trust in the uh, legal system is very vital and invaluable in, in every nation building. The law is a tool uh, you know, that is used to perhaps seek justice, I would say. Mm -hmm. But as a tool, the law generally you know, served the interests of those who, who have property and wealth in, in some cases. However, getting our legal system to work more favorable for all and not just for those you know who have means and ensuring fairness to all requires a lot of commitment i would say mm -hmm. now how can the nation work together to actually achieve this that's an interesting question i think we already have some mechanisms within the legal system to uh, uh, assist those who cannot um, assess justice or assess the legal system. Right. So, for example, we have the legal aid scheme, um, which is there to assist, who do not have the means to assess the justice system. Um, lawyers are encouraged to take cases on pro bono basis mm -hmm. um, to assess clients, and a, a lot of lawyers do that. Um, what we don't have in Ghana, which we have in some institutions abroad, is also the universities and the faculties of law um, getting into the game um, with what are known as uh, legal clinics. Um, so the legal clinics serves as an opportunity for students studying law to help some of these people who otherwise would not have access to justice. So I think that is something that we have to work on to bring into our various faculties of law so that students will, number one, have first-hand experience with the workings of the law rather than just studying law in the various lecture theatres. And at the same time, they will be assisting the vulnerable in society with legal aid, with legal advice, um, which will go a long way. You said earlier democracy is a work in progress in, in Ghana. Yeah. Now, on our media uh, uh, airwaves now, when we talk about peace and election, people say, ah, stop inciting the public. I mean, mm -hmm. we've, we've had very good elections in, in 2008, super election in 2012, and even in 1992. And mm -hmm. then, you know, it's so unnecessary to really talk about peace and, and let the need to come together. Do you think that, um, or is, is there a rationale or a connection that says because we've had a very good election in the past years, is going to fall suit, is going to be the same as we've had? No, I, I think it's important we create the awareness that again we, we, we are still experimenting with our democracy. It's very fragile. We, we have issues within the democratic setup. So I think it's important for the media to make people aware of what can happen if we do not, um, if we are not cautious. And I think it's important um, that is done. But I think at the end of the day, we should trust our institutions to work. I think mm. your responsibility as a voter, if you take it as your responsibility, is just to go and vote. You, you, you listen to the various political parties, you make your decision, you go and vote, and you go home, and you wait for the result. If that is our attitude, there, there will be no need um, for calling on people to be peaceful and things like that, because that is inherent in the voting process. Right. Your responsibility is to go vote and go home, and then sit by your radio and listen to the result. There's no need to be going around fighting with anybody or that, that is not your job. Mm. Your job is to go and vote and come home. That is what happens in other legal systems. When there are elections in Canada, you don't hear about violence or things like that. You just I go and vote ask and you, you come home. So, so in advanced countries, it's, it's okay. I mean, the election runs smoothly. Yes, insults in there, but the election, it's, it's smooth. Uh, the winner is declared. Whoever loses concedes. Yeah. You know, life goes on, yeah. but in Africa, or let's say in Ghana, it, it's giddy giddy, and it's you know, it, it, it's it's you, you hear people say uh, uh, horrible things and insults, and your heart just sinks. Yeah. What is that? What what is it? Why is that so? That's a, that's a difficult question for me to answer, but I think 
there is a sense, at least in Ghana, that if your party is not in, then you are out. There's a perception that the, the state does not exist for everybody. So it really matters that you have your political party in power because then you benefit directly or indirectly from it. That, that is the only reason I can use to account for the situation mm. here. In other jurisdictions, the state is there for everybody. It doesn't matter whether it's, it doesn't really matter whether it's the so, Democrats so, so, so Richard, or the again, let, let me ask, so is it well, when we ever get to the point where you are, for today's uh, 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 interview sake, you are, say, NDC, I am NPP or vice versa, and then perhaps you win or I win, then I say, oh, Richard, come come help me and then people go like no he's a political prostitute and and he's not loyal to the party what's your take on that yeah i think that, that is possible i think it has happened in the past i think the kufu administration uh, drew on people from other political parties so it's possible i think we gradually have to move to a situation in which we focus on competence rather than political affiliation because it's a very small country mm. we don't have a lot of people so we have to definitely make use of all the talent available in the legal system mm. or in in the country and i think the way we practice democracy we've practiced it in such a way that it tends to exclude rather than bring people on board and that is problematic but will we allow ourselves to actually join the other party you think if, if no i don't if think I'm it's a question of joining the other party it's a question of Ghana. going to serve your country if that is the approach mm. then it shouldn't be a question of politics you're going to serve your country your country first then the political party comes the hard truth with akosia konedu only on vice at one brought to you by echo bank Bank, we see a great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries, it's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. We talked about, uh, you know, people or everyone rallying behind Hillary and then Trump won. Mm -hmm. Well, in our part of the world here, let's say in Ghana now, 7 December, do we expect to see some surprises or are we just going to see the usual the, the usual faces that we know? What do you think? I'm, I'm not very <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, but I think I think it's undeniable that in Ghana there are two major political parties. So you would expect that. Well, can there be a miracle where you know someone uh, from miracles somewhere. happen but i don't see that one going that far i don't seriously with the wealth of knowledge and the experience you have gathered uh, uh, uh whilst you were in ghana you know and all of that why don't you come home i mean why are you, <laughs> why are you in canada sir, Richard? That, that's an interesting question why don't i come why, home? why don't you come and serve ghana <laughs> why are you at center rivers and well you're studying yeah yes but so are you going to come home anytime soon i will definitely come home and i'll come so home when is the when is the program ending which program you you said you're schooling no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a professor. Then. Oh, you are a professor yeah. then. Good, but so, so what, what, what stops you from coming home? Well, I think they are complicated personal issues. Oh, you like that? But you I like the Canadian dollars I, I more will, than I will, the I will definitely <laughs> come home, and I think we also have to appreciate that people can make a contribution even while they are outside. It's important for every country to have some of its people outside because they also make an impact. We wouldn't have had 
for example, Kofiana, mm. if Kofiana was based in Ghana. So it's, it's definitely important. There are other Ghanaians making an impact abroad, and it's all beneficial to Ghana. I think the most important thing is we have to find ways and means of drawing on their talent. Are you coming to vote 7 December or you stay there and, and listen or watch on the internet? Uh, I, I don't think I'll come back to vote, oh, but I'll change. definitely encourage my people. Back to, to vote for who? No, to no, no. Vote for <laughs> they should vote for the person of their choice. They right. should just listen but, but to the Really, finally, Rachel, what would you say? What, what would you tell the Ghanaian populace? How many weeks more? We have barely uh, uh, two, two months more to election. What, what, what would you want to tell the Ghanaian populace? We have to take our democratic experiment very seriously. As citizens, we have to appreciate that our responsibility is to listen to the various political parties, listen to the issues on the table. On election day, go and cast your ballot and walk back home or drive back home and just wait for the result. I think that is how democracy is practiced in other, other countries and that is how we should practice it. There is no reason why you should be hanging around at the ballot station trying to cause violence, commotion and things like that. That is not part of your responsibility. We should trust the institutions to work. The institutions have mechanisms, the various political parties will be represented at the polling station if there is any issue. We have to work through the system. The courts are there to resolve those issues. And once the courts make a decision, I think we have to respect that. That is how countries develop. We will not always have things our own way. We have to respect the outcome of whatever happens on, uh, on, on December 7th and then move on. Because the country is bigger than any other political party. And it will not be good for the citizens if the country falls apart because you have to remember the big people you're voting for it's likely they will fly out immediately <laughs> and then you will be left so you, you shouldn't devalue your life in that way don't devalue your life just vote and go home and uh, wait for the results thank you so much Richard thank for you very much. The heart. <laughs> Professor Richard Frimpon or Richard Frimpon upon yes mm -hmm. Prof Prof, uh, yes, Richard from Pono Pono, an associate professor at the Faculty of Law, Thompson Rivers uh, University in Canada. And uh, you've been watching The Hard Truth. And we are proudly brought to you by Octoglo Ghana Limited and supported by your favorite bank, Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank. My name is Nana Akwisa Knula Santis Samuels. Have a good evening. Bye. Dr. Richard uh, Frimpon upon, I don't know how to call you, whether to call you a doctor or a lawyer. How should I address Richard you? Richard is enough. Well, he's being modest. <laughs> so Richard Frimpon upon is an associate <coughs> professor at the Faculty of Law, uh, Thompson Rivers University in Canada. Richard, the uh, chief observer of um, the European Union election observation mission in Ghana 2016, Mr. Uh, Thames uh, Mesurit, has said it's very important that Ghana protect its democracy and build on it you know, in the upcoming election. In its broad sense, can we call Ghana, um, let's say, a mature democratic uh, 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 state, uh, state, and how can we build on uh, you know, the election just a few weeks away? Weeks away? I think uh, I would say we are still experimenting with democracy. It takes time um, um, for, experimenting. Dem for democracy to develop. I think in but that... But we say that Ghana is a conk 100% democratic state. We say with so much passion. So if experimenting, it's like we are not sure what we're doing. I, no, I, I think that that's not what it means. It means that we're still working on it. And we've been working on it since 1992. And I think so far we've done very well um, with that experiment compared to um, the situation in other African states, said that 
we are now seeing even as a star um, um, on the continent. So that is very important. But I think we have to appreciate that we are still developing our democracy and we, we, we shouldn't be complacent about what we have because it's very fragile. That's why I call it an experiment. Mm -hmm. And it, it can easily fall apart if we do not work to also stay in it. And I think one of the things which we really have to do is to make sure that our institutions work. It's, it's very important that we respect our institutions, the institution of the Electoral mm -hmm. Commission, the institution of the Judiciary, the Executive Parliament, and things like that. We, we have to have confidence in our institutions, and we, we don't have to disrespect those institutions or act towards them in a manner which will undermine them. Is, is very important. Richard, trust in the uh, legal system is very vital and invaluable in, in every nation building. The law is a tool uh, you know, that is used to perhaps seek justice, I would say. Mm -hmm. But as a tool, the law generally you know, served the interests of those who, who have property and wealth in, in some cases. However, getting our legal system to work more favorable for all and not just for those you know who have means and ensuring fairness to all requires a lot of commitment taking his business dealings i think if he was that type he wouldn't have do we do we succeeded. run a presidency or do we run a country you know with a business model i mean i'm a, I'm a good business woman, a good businessman so equally i'm going to be a, a good president does it work that way I, I don't think it easily translates, mm. but I, th I think it will be beneficial because the hope, the hope in the United States is that because he's a businessman, he will be able to improve the economy. I think that that was a major part of his campaigning. So again, we have to wait and see, but you cannot certainly run a state like you are running a business. The, the state does not exist to make profits, for example. So you cannot treat human beings in a state as you treat employees or customers um, in a business. But again, we have to wait and see. But, but let's means. go back a little bit. Do, do you think that uh, Sanders was a better choice uh, than uh, Hillary? People are saying if, if Sanders was, was to be in the forefront, the story would have been different. What, what, do you, what would you say to that? I think it's always difficult to prove a negative. I suspect the country was just not ready to elect a Democrat. It looks like even a frog stood for the <laughs> Republicans they would have voted for him. So <laughs> I don't really think it's a problem with Hillary. She certainly had some issues with um, these emails and things like that. But personally, I won't put it on the same level as insulting women, insulting migrants. Of course, we all have problems with emails. It's a, mm. a mature woman. She doesn't know a lot about mm. technology. So you can't expect him uh, her to be dealing with technology in the same way as a 15-year-old will be doing. But that, that, that's another. So I don't think it's her fault. Do stay on. We'll be right back. The Hard Truth with Akosia Konedu. Only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Ecobank. Bank, we see a great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries, it's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is... It doesn't look like an international is signing up onto this treaty. I don't think it will happen. Richard, before the uh, United States election, most polls in the U.S. and many more across the world, you know, tipped Hillary Clinton to win the presidential, you know, elections. Mm -hmm. Now, the world, you know, shook or there was some shaking mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, Trump against all odds meshed uh, mm -hmm. uh, victorious on the D-Day. Yeah. 
Were you surprised, let me ask, let me ask by the outcome of the U.S. election? I was very surprised. I, I never expected, I think I told my class a million times that it would not happen. And I was very surprised that it happened. But I think we all have to appreciate that the United States is a very different country. Mm. And it tends to be very unpredictable. And this is a classic example where you cannot easily extend or you, you cannot easily understand what is going on in the country because in no other part of the world will you have such a guy as the president of the country, somebody <laughs> who is insulting women, who is insulting immigrants, who is a businessman and you don't know any of his connections, business dealings with them. We don't know a lot about this, um, mm -hmm. um, this guy, but I think that is what the people elected. Yes, but, but what, what do you really it? make of, of uh, his stance and uh, proposed action regarding uh, immigrants, especially African immigrants in the U.S.? I think so far his immigration talk has been directed more against uh, Medi Mexicans. Mexican, um, yeah. Africa did not feature a lot in the elections, in the debates, and also in the various statements uh, made by the candidates. So we don't really know whether um, Africans will be targeted. And um, I don't believe that there are many illegal um, African migrants in the United States compared to um, people coming from Mexico. And it, it takes a lot to get to the United States. You know, States after the election, here. most people said, yeah, it would be difficult now securing visas uh, to yeah. the U.S. Did you foresee that happening in any part of the African countries? It, it, it all depends on whether or not he's prepared to implement some of the statements which he made in the course of um, the campaigning. So in the course of the campaigning, he talked about extreme vetting, mm, for example. Mm. So if that is going to happen, mm. then definitely it will disadvantage um, uh, some of our colleagues and, um, um, and brothers and sisters coming from Africa um, to visit the United <laughs> States, for example. So if it, it's all a question of whether or not he will implement. and. After the election, some of the statements he's made, I think, you get a sense that he's walking back a yeah, little. Yeah, he's crawling on some. back. Yeah. So we, we, we all have to pay attention. But, but we, we practice democracy. We practice it in such a way that it tends to exclude rather than bring people on board. And that is problematic. But will we allow ourselves to actually join the other party? You think if, if no, I don't if think I'm it's a question of joining the other party. It's a to question of Ghana. going to serve your country. If that is the approach, mm. then it shouldn't be a question of politics. You're going to serve your country. Your country first, then the political party comes. The hard truth with Akosia Kunedu only on Vice at One. Brought to you by EcoBank. Bank, we see a great future, one that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries, it's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure. While individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African and Ecobank is the Pan-African Bank. We talked about, uh, you know, people or everyone rallying behind Hillary and then Trump won. Mm -hmm. Well, in our part of the world here, let's say in Ghana now, 7 December, do we expect to see some surprises or are we just going to see the usual the, the usual faces that we know? What do you think? I'm, I'm not very <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, but I think I think it's undeniable that in Ghana there are two major political parties. So you would expect that... Well, can there be a miracle where... You know, someone uh, from miracles somewhere. happen, but I don't see that one going that far. I don't. 
Seriously, with the wealth of knowledge and uh, experience you have gathered uh, 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 whilst you were in Ghana, you know, and all of that, why don't you come home? I mean, why are you, <laughs> why are you in Canada, Sir Richard? <laughs> that, that's an interesting question. Why don't I come home? Why, why don't you come and serve Ghana? <laughs> why are you at St. Rivers and, well, you're studying. Yeah. Yes, so are you going to come home anytime soon? I will definitely come home. And I'll come so home. So when is the when is the program ending? Which program? Your, you said you are schooling. The ICC. Now Obama came in and has subsequently re-established a working relationship uh, with the court. Let me ask what you foresee Donald Trump uh, are doing with uh, in regards to the ICC. Yeah, personally, I don't um, foresee the United States signing up to the Rome um, Statute anytime soon. I think um, definitely Obama was an internationalist and one would have expected um, that he would have done a little more in terms of getting the, the United States on to um, as a member of the organization. Um, but certainly there's no support mm. for the organization in Congress and Congress is the one which um, has to ratify this treaty um, before they, it, it can become uh, can enter into force in the United States. So I don't see Trump who is who doesn't look like an internationalist signing up onto this treaty i don't think it will happen richard before the uh united states election most polls in the u.s and many more across the world you know tipped hillary clinton to win the presidential you know elections mm -hmm. now the world you know shocked or there was some shaking mm -hmm. uh when you know trump against all odds smashed mm -hmm. uh, uh victorious on the d-day yeah were you surprised, let me ask, ask, by the outcome of the U.S. election? I was very surprised. I, I never expected, I think I told my class a million times that it would not happen. And I was very surprised that it happened. But I think we all have to appreciate that the United States is a very different country. Mm -hmm. And it tends to be very unpredictable. And this is a classic example where you cannot easily extend or you, you cannot easily understand what is going on in the country because in no other part of the world will you have such a guy as the president of the country, somebody <laughs> who is insulting women, who is insulting immigrants, who is a businessman and you don't know any of his connections, business dealings with them. We don't know a lot about this, mm. um, um, this guy, but I think that is what the people elected. Yes, but, but what would you really it. make of, of uh, his stance and uh, proposed action regarding uh, immigrants, especially African immigrants in the U.S.? I think so far his immigration talk has been directed more against uh, Medi Mexicans. Mexican, um, yeah. Africa did not feature a lot in the elections, in the debates, and also in the various statements uh, made by the candidates. So we don't really know whether um, Africans will be targeted and um, I don't believe that there are many illegal um, African migrants in the United States compared to um, people coming from Mexico and it, it takes a lot to get to the United you know, States after from the election, here, most not in the country because in no other part of the world will you have such a guy as the president of the country, somebody <laughs> who is insulting women, who is insulting immigrants, who is a businessman and you don't know any of his connections, business dealings with them. We don't know a lot about this, mm. um, um, this guy, but I think that is what the people elected. Yes, but, but what would you really it. make of, of uh, his stance and uh, proposed action regarding uh, immigrants, especially African immigrants in the U.S.? I think so far his immigration talk has been directed more against uh, Medi Mexicans. Mexican, um, yeah. Africa did not feature a lot in the elections, in the debates, and also in the various statements uh, made by the candidates. So we don't really know whether um, Africans will be targeted and um, I don't believe that there are many illegal um, African migrants in the United States compared to um, people coming from Mexico and it, it takes a lot to get to the United States. You know, States after the election, here. most people said, yeah, it would be difficult now securing visas uh, to yeah. the U.S. Did you foresee that happening in any parts of the African countries? It, it, it all depends on whether or not he's prepared to implement some of the statements which he made 
in the course of um, the campaigning. So in the course of the campaigning, he talked about extreme vetting, mm, for example. Mm. So if that is going to happen, mm. then definitely it will disadvantage um, uh, some of our colleagues and, um, um, and brothers and sisters coming from Africa um, to visit the United <laughs> States, for example. So if, it, it's all a question of whether or not he will implement. And after the election, some of the statements he's made, I think, you get a sense that he's walking back a yeah, little. Yeah, he's crawling some. back. Yeah. So we, we, we all have to wait and but, see. But Richard, even if, you know, he doesn't actually deport illegal <coughs> uh, 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 immigrants, do mm -hmm. you also think that his posture and, and comments will really foment the uh, divisive uh, politics of race? Oh, absolutely. I think the United States has, has always been a divided country. I think it's an illusion to believe that mm -hmm. the United mm -hmm. States is not. And what happened during the elections, I think, has worsened the situation. So now there's a lot of news online, even on the BBC, CNN, about churches being labeled with graffiti yeah, yeah. and and on and all yeah. that so a lot of horrible things are going on and have been reported and i think his campaigning and some of the statements that he made in the course of um the campaigning has made the situation worse that's emboldened some people um and again we just have to wait and see alan lichman uh, i think a history professor who has predicted nine uh, conservative uh, 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 presidential elections is all based on a uh, model he created you know predicted trump would win mm -hmm. now this professor also said also predicted that trump will eventually be impeached by the republican congress that will prefer you know mike president mike uh, pence mm -hmm. again in your opinion do you think that mr trump will you know survive a first time in office i don't see why he won't but he he looks like somebody you cannot predict, so you don't really know what he will do on a day-to-day mm -hmm. basis. So, again, we just have to wait and see. Of course, he's not being erratic in his business dealings. I think if he was that type, he wouldn't have Do we, do we run a presidency or do we run a country, you know, with a business model? I mean, I'm a, I'm a good businesswoman, a good businessman, so equally I'm going to be a, a good president. Does it work that way? I, I don't think it easily translates, mm. but I, th I think it will be beneficial because the hope, the hope in the United States is that because he's a businessman, he will be able to improve the economy. I think that that was a major part of his campaigning. So again, we have to wait and see, but you cannot certainly run a state like you are running a business. The, the state does not exist to make profit, for example. So you cannot treat human beings in a state as you treat employees or customers um, in a business. But again, we have to wait and see. But, but let's means. go back a little bit. Do, do you think that uh, Sanders was a better choice uh, than uh, Hillary? People are saying if, if Sanders was, was to be in the forefront, the story would have been different. What, what, do you, what would you say to that? I think it's always difficult to prove a negative. I suspect the country was just not ready to elect a Democrat. It looks like even a frog stood for the <laughs> Republicans, they would have voted for him. So <laughs> I don't really think it's a problem with Hillary. She certainly had some issues with um, these emails and things like that. But personally, I won't put it on the same level as insulting women, insulting migrants. Of course, we all have problems with emails. It's a, mm. a mature woman. She doesn't know a lot about mm. technology. So you can't expect him uh, her to be dealing with technology in the same way as a 15-year-old will be doing. But that, that, that's another story. I don't think it's her fault. Do stay on. We'll be right back. The Hard Truth with Akosia Konedu. Only on Vice at One. Brought to you by Echo Bank.